Hey, dreamer. Sit back and relax. I'll take you to your next dream. This hour, baby. Hmm. Is it something urgent? No. Is it something life threatening? No, either, huh? Well, if it's not urgent or life threatening. And I think he can afford to do it in the next morning, right? Tomorrow. Now it's time for you to sleep. You already have your pajamas on. So what are you waiting for? Oh, honey. You always say that you have insomnia, but I think you just need to find your off switch. You always have your phone on, now looking for things to do. Now it's work, other times it's watch social media, YouTube, TikTok, or what? Instagram, Twitter, what do you usually use for social media, baby? <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> you see what I mean? You keep distracting yourself from sleep. That's not good. Alright, Missy, come here. Yep, scooch on over here. And lie down on my chest. Hmm? Yeah. You need to turn off. Mm-hmm. You've been awake for a long time today, baby. It's time for you to retire and go to sleep. Come on, baby. <laughs> I'm waiting. No. Oh. My chest is really comfortable, you know. All you need to do is just scooch on over here and put that pretty little head of yours gently on my chest. Mm, that's it. Mm -hmm. ah. Now, doesn't that feel good? Now, let me help you sleep. Yeah, I get it. Sleeping can be really hard sometimes. But we all need it, at least once a day. I think the most difficult part of sleeping is to actually allowing your body to relax. Hmm. Because the more you try to relax, the harder it is to actually do so. It's like one of those things that you just have to unconsciously do. If you're too conscious, if you think about it too much, you'll end up just overthinking it. And you won't be relaxing. So, take a deep breath. Follow me. Yeah. Nice and deep and take long pauses in between.
that's it baby keep on breathing just like that now feel your muscles just loosening up hmm. feel them feel those muscle fibers just unlatching and getting free but it's okay baby that's how it's supposed to be uh, mm, since you're here on my chest perhaps you could also listen the faint beating of my heartbeat just a little bit Keep doing that, and I'll read you a bedtime story. Unless that's out. Hmm? Like I always say, you're never too old to hear a bedtime story. And besides, I tell the best story. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. I don't even have to move. We don't need to move. I always keep myself a book right next to the bed. Especially for such occasions like this. Hmm. Now, let's see. What fairy tale world should we go to? Hmm. Ah. This is a new one that I've read recently. I personally like it very much. It's called The Lion's Whisker. This is a folktale story from Ethiopia in Africa. It's quite an interesting story about a mother who would like to get closer to her son. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what's it about. Long ago, in Ethiopia, a woman named Leah married a man who had a son. His wife had died several years before. Try as Leah might, she could not seem to spark a connection with the child. She offered the boy food, and he refused to eat. She spoke softly to him, and he turned away. She sat next to him, and he would get up and walk away. After several months of this, Leah didn't know what to do. Now in Leah's village, there was a medicine man, a healer, who lived off in the mountains. When anyone in the village was sick or hurting, a visit to him would do the trick. Most of the time, Leah felt she could fix her own problems, but not this time. She needed help. As Leah came up to the healer's hut, she saw the door was open. The old doctor said without turning around, I hear you coming. What's the problem? She introduced herself and explained. Ah, oh, yes, he said. I understand. But what do you expect me to do about it? Make me a potion, an amulet, cried Leah. Anything. Whatever it takes to get this child to respond to me. The medicine man looked her in the eye. Young woman, he said. This is not the same as fixing a broken bone or curing an ear infection. I'm going to need some time to think about it. Come back in three days. Three days later, Leah returned to the hut. 
Yeah, said the old man with a smile. I have good news for you. There is a potion that will change the child's behavior toward you. But you should know that it needs a special ingredient. You must bring me a whisker from a live lion. A lion's whisker? said Nia with a shock. Such a thing is not possible. You want your stepson to turn around? he shouted. Bring me a whisker from a lion. Then he turned his back. There's nothing more to say. As you can see, I'm a very busy man. That night, Leah tossed and turned. How could she get a whisker from a live lion? The next day, she left the house. In her hand was a bowl of rice covered with meat sauce. Leah went to a grove of shady trees where lion tracks had been seen, and a lion was known to live. She walked up to a safe distance from the shady trees and very quietly set the bowl down on the grass. Then, as quietly and safely as she could, she backed away and went home. The next day, at the same time, she took another bowl of rice covered with meat sauce to the cave. When she saw that the old bowl was empty, she took it and put down the new full one. Again, she left quietly. Every day she did this. Months went by. Leah never saw the lion, but she knew from the footprints on the ground that it was the lion who was eating her food. Then one day, she noticed the lion's head poking out from behind some trees. Being sure not to look the lion in the eye, she stepped very slowly to the same spot as always. She put down the new full bowl of food, picked up the empty bowl, and stepped away. Day by day, the lion's head poked from behind the trees that were closer and closer to where she set down the pole, until one morning the lion was sitting next to the empty pole when she arrived, waiting for her. This time she sat and waited while the lion ate. When he was done, she petted its thick fur just like a house cat. She looked into its gentle lion eyes and saw that it now trusted her. Actually, she thought, it is a rather friendly creature when you get to know it. This went for a while, until finally Leah thought the time had come to see if she could get the whisker. The next day, she brought with her a small knife. After she set down the bowl of food, and the lion allowed her to pet its head, she said in a low voice, Oh, dearest lion, might I have, please, just one of your many fine whiskers? While petting the lion with one hand, she quickly cut off the whisker with the other, careful not to hurt the lion in any way. Thank you, my gentle friend, she said. Quickly, she ran into the medicine man's hut, Holding the whisker tight in her hand, she cried, I have it. I have the lion's whisker. You don't say, said the healer, turning around. From a live lion? Yes, she said. Tell me, said he, how did you do it? She explained the steps. With pride, she handed him the whisker. The healer looked at it with care. Then he walked over to the fire and threw it in, where it burned up right away to a crisp. W what have you done? Leah cried. What it took for me to get that. Leah, said the old doctor softly. You don't need the whisker. Tell me, is this child really more dangerous than a lion?
if a wild beast will respond to your patient, loving care, don't you think a child who misses his mother will too? Mia was startled, but she thought, maybe. And by the time she got back home, she knew what she could do. The end. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice little story. Sometimes what you're looking for is not exactly what you expect. Sometimes going out to find a lion's whisker could actually teach you how to take care of a child. And I think the most important of all is that patience is a key when dealing with a wild beast. And also when dealing with a broken heart. I believe the little child was heartbroken as his mother was no longer with him. You can never really replace a child's mother. But what you can do is be there for them. Be there for the child. And with time, they'll warm up to you. And perhaps they'll look up to you. Mm. How are you holding up, baby? <laughs> like somebody has wandered off to the dream world already, huh? Or at least you're on your way. time you open them, it will be a brand new day. And I'll be here with you all night and until the next morning. Good night, baby. Sweet dreams.